We are honored to host uh, Dr. Hossein Rezai Jorabi, who is uh, currently Global Design Director at uh, Rumble, an outstanding engineering firm with uh, several thousands, thousands of employees uh, all around the world. Uh, Hossein got a PhD in Structural Engineering at the University of uh, Westminster. Then he founded uh, his uh, engineering firm, Web Structures, uh, in Singapore. Then, a few years ago, Web Structures entered the Rambo universe. In his exceptional career, uh, he had the occasion to work on many important projects uh, all over the world, and uh, he established important connections with universities uh, like uh, University, National University of Singapore and uh, Politecnico di Milano. Uh, among the other achievements, uh, he uh, also served in the jury of the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. Uh, and I could say also that uh, uh, you are a pioneer of uh, fusion engineering and the only engineer uh, to get the designer award from the president uh, of uh, Singapore. Uh, so, uh, what do you think about the relationship between uh, engineering, architecture and environment? Well, thank, thank you very much for, for the invitation, Rafael, and for that beautiful um, introduction. Um, the, uh, the relationship between these three topics uh, have never been as close to each other as, as they are now. Uh, they've, they've started maybe many years ago as being joined and, and fused together through some round of specialization, they moved in different directions, moved apart, the but they're now getting together and becoming fused together to the point that we are we're beginning to see the, uh, the beginning of uh, the transdiscipline, a new discipline that is developing, which has the, the new goal of the so DNA of these, these three that, uh, that you mentioned. And one of the key factors that enables these uh, closeness of these uh, topics together is embracing technology. Currently, you know, the advent, the advent of AI, advanced computation and design, uh, those tools, which I, I still think they are the more than tools, are collaborators. They are enabling architects to be thinking more like engineers, engineers to be thinking and operating more like architects, and environmental consultants to be thinking and operating like both of these. So the whole system of these three becoming just one is, is, the, is the trend that we have been seeing in the past few years. Well, it's an important uh, trend uh, for the future, especially in view of uh, sustainable uh, development. Uh, one of the keywords of your activity is regenerative design. Can you provide us some hints about that important topic? Um, regenerative design and regenerative thinking are part of a, a new paradigm, uh, perhaps regenerative worldview, which is a sort of new philosophy of, of how to approach um, the questions of design, question of environment, technology, etc. Um, until recently, it has been seen as a subsetting to, to the sustainability and environmental congruency uh, agenda. Um, whereas the sustainable development, uh, going back to the Brundtland report of 1987, uh, is about being less bad. Regenerative design turns that on its head and says being less bad is still being bad. And we need to be more good. Mm -hmm. So it is about healing the damage that we have created in the past. So it's about, about regeneration. Um, and it applies to many disciplines. In fact, it started in the discipline of agriculture. In the built environment and in the design spheres, it is rather new, say about 20 years or so, but it has developed and progressed rapidly. And the whole idea is that uh, the path of sustainable development, sustainable design, uh, on which many of us and many other uh, people, scientists, practitioners, academia, have worked very, very hard to contribute to, has brought us to the point where we are now. When we looked at where we are now, we see that all the environmental indicators are going 
in the directions that we don't want them to go. Indicators that we want to go down, like carbon, greenhouse gases, are going up, and they're going up exponentially. Indicators that we want to go up, biodiversity, for instance, on a site or a project, they're going down. So, and, and that applies to everything within the, um, our relationship with the environment, which is the environmental justice we've been looking for, as well as to the social justice, like when within our species, the inequity, the, the, the gap between the rich and the poor. So we are where we are, which is not a very pleasant place to be, uh, on the path of sustainability. Regenerative thinking is that new paradigm which says that it's no longer good to be bad, mm -hmm. less bad. And that it, so it sets out ambitions to make things better. So when you do a project, it is no longer about keeping the carbon down so that you damage less, but it is about building a building to be generous to the neighborhood, to contribute to the biodiversity, to the, to the greenery, to the pleasantry of the, of, of, the, of the whole neighborhood and the city and the streets. And it's in a way, it's a new paradigm. Uh, but the fundamentals of it are very, very, very simple and, and understandable. And that's something that I'm hoping to be doing some, some work with yourself at the, at the Polytechnico uh, later this year. Indeed, uh, we are organizing this uh, Passion in Action uh, course that will be held uh, in the spring semester between uh, April and May. I love also your idea about the fact that everyone's life uh, should be a journey towards excellence. Perhaps in your case, it is a journey through excellence. Uh, you also had uh, a very nice conversation in the recent past about this with uh, a famous uh, uh, football champion like uh, Cesc Fabregas. And now you have a book over there that is just related to design excellence. So what is your advice uh, to younger people about that? I think one of the reasons why we have not succeeded in our environmental endeavors, as we were talking, talking earlier, uh, is because we don't pursue excellence enough. It's not that we don't have the solutions. It don't, it's not that we do not know how to reduce carbon, how to increase biodiversity, or how to enhance social justice. We know that. Those last year, one of the IPCC reports was dedicated to, to this whole issue. And, and basically the message was that for every environmental challenge that we have, we have a technically viable solution that works. The reason why we're not succeeding is that we do not pursue excellence. We do not do the best that we know is available. And part of that is because we compromise. We compromise too early, too often. And in fact, we've got to a point where compromise has become a virtue. As if, as if it's better to compromise. The guy who doesn't compromise is hard, is, is not flexible enough. I, I, I think that needs to change. I think we have the solutions. And unless we pursue the, the, the excellence that exists in all of us, uh, we will continue to be on the path that we are now. A lot of good people doing a lot of good work, producing no results. Not the desired results, at least. So, so excellence for me is, 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 is along that, uh, that, that route. It is a positive thing. It is not about elitism. You know, it, is, it is excellence that exists in all of us. It's just that we, we, we do not encourage it. Uh, to, to, to manifest itself. And this is an important message for our students. I think that they really need to push your excellence just beginning in the university rooms. The final question that I always ask is, uh, what is your idea about the future of civil and environmental engineering? I think for, for, for the topics, one of the things that I see, um, and I've been thinking a lot about it and sort of doing some work and, and, and uh, studies on it, 
I think we are moving towards a, a situation where we are all, a lot of us, are going to be transdisciplinary. I can see a future in the next 15 years or so where some of the professions that we, we currently have in individual pillars won't exist anymore. That we may not have a particular someone whose job is to be a structural engineer only, but that we move towards a, 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 a transdiscipline which has structural engineering in it, mechanical engineering in it, environmental engineering, architecture in it, design in it, and and similarly that minds come together, and uh, not so much the the traditional collaborate collaborative model where. Still, there would be someone who would be um, the core competence would be structural engineering, and another one who would be architecture, etc. But they would come come together and collaborate together and go move away. But actually, they become fused together in that transdiscipline. I think that is one one of the things that I, I see. I, I, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe it will happen. The other thing is, especially for our students, our young, younger students, um, embracing complexity. The world out there is a very, very complex world. We continuously are encouraged to come up with simple answers. We, in fact, we, we, we reward people. So well, that, that he came up with such a simple answer, that's good. You know, simple answers are only applicable to simple problems. And simple problems should not be solved by polytechnic or graduates. Now, if you're dealing with a simple problem, now that's a test. You're doing someone else's job. You know, so embracing complexity is, is, is the thing to do, which requires system thinking, regenerative worldview, you know, all of these things which are all connected, connected to one another. Uh, so I, I would encourage, don't be afraid of complexity, don't move away from it, in fact, go towards it. Don't reduce complex problems into a series of simple problems. Solve these simple problems individually, then aggregate the solutions and pretend that the aggregated solution is the solution to that complex problem. It never is. That is why we're where we are, you know, with, in our relationship say, with the environment. It's not that we don't know. We do. We've known the answers for many, many years. It's just that we would break them into simple parts and, and then destroy the problem rather than solving it. You know, a complex problem is a beautiful problem that we need to deal with us. So we need a, a holistic approach uh, to design. Uh, now, thank you very much, Hossein. We are really looking forward to hosting you for the Passion in Action course so that we can elaborate uh, about uh, these uh, very important topics. Thank you. Thank you very much.